Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. We've got a great show tonight, but before we start, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country's facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden. The last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, we now have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get The Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. Tonight, we are joined by writer for The Federalist, Brianna Lyman, and contributing contributing writer for Media Research Center TV, Stephanie Hamill. Brianna and Stephanie, um, we're back to Trump v. Biden. It's official. It's official now. We can say that as of last week, Donald Trump and Joe Biden became their nominees uh, for the Republican and Democrat Party. So it's 2020 round two. Um, it's sort of amazing. I think we all felt like we would be back in this space, Stephanie. But here we are. It it's it's the same, but it's so different, right? Because I keep saying this, we have an incredible opportunity right now to actually compare two presidents and two presidencies. You know as an American citizen, how it will be if Joe Biden is in the White House, because we are, God bless us all, living through it right now, barely surviving. Things are a disaster. It feels like every day we're on the verge of World War III. There are more issues. Life is harder for people. You also know, if you go back three and a half years ago, what life was like under Donald Trump as president. So we're in a very unique time right now, Stephanie. And it feels different to me because I just have this sense, and I have to think this, that people have started to understand what is at stake in this upcoming election. I'm sure I don't have to ask if you were surprised about the fact that it is official Trump versus Biden, but what are your, th your thoughts as we are now in it to win it? Definitely not surprised. Uh, congratulations to President Trump. Uh, as you pointed out, there's a stark contrast between, uh, you know, three and a half years ago and now. And we keep seeing this messaging from the White House that the economy is great and everything's so good, yet people can hardly afford to live, right? Groceries are so expensive. Every other day, these new videos are going viral of, of especially young people finding it really hard to navigate <clears throat> through the Biden economy. I mean, people are going to social media and literally crying, sincere sincerely crying and, and they're explaining how difficult it is just to get by that they are just skating by with the basic necessities and, and they're still having a hard time um, you know getting by in this in this economy so um, no not surprised at all that we're here again and it is very different uh, enthusiasm when it comes to support for Biden is very low uh, I don't know if you saw this video that was going viral of the recent Biden event I believe it was in Atlanta Georgia but maybe I'm wrong but I, I think it was Atlanta Georgia there was no line to get in I mean there was like a few people I think yeah. like a total of a hundred people showed up and most of them were uh, pro-Palestine protesters who were there to scream at Biden. And then you compare that to the recent events, uh, campaign events that Donald Trump has been to. Uh, you think of the, the the recent fight that he went to in Miami where the whole arena abrupted. 70,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. exactly. And then uh, even just in my local area, I live in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I remember back in 2020, there were like a few ridiculous people that had the Biden-Harris signs in their yard, uh, which is kind of interesting because this is a very conservative Republican area. And I swear, I've driven around town many, many times, the, the local neighbors that had the signs up, there's zero sign in, signs for Biden and Harris. No one yeah. is putting out their support publicly anymore if they're even still supporting them. Yeah, it's it's really it's really something to see. Brianna, <clears throat> you know, Marianne Williamson is someone who I always keep my eye on. Don't get me wrong. The crystal <laughs> stuff back four years ago, I was all about it. 
all, all of the, the uh, interesting things that she brought to the table, of course, on the Democrat side, but I, I was here for it. I really I found that interesting. Here's what I think is funny. She suspended her campaign in February. And then as of like a week ago or so, she reinstated her campaign. So it's back up and running. To me, this speaks to the fact that they know on the Democrat side, Joe Biden, as Stephanie is just pointing out, is a horrible candidate. This is just about the worst person you could possibly run, maybe short of Kamala Harris, because I think they're kind of pulling around the same space. So Marianne Williamson is back in it. Um, we know Joe Biden doesn't want to do debates with Donald Trump because, gosh, let's face it, Joe Biden, if they set him up with a teleprompter and everything is cushy and done properly, this guy can barely get through it. They had to really hop him up on something for that State of the Union address uh, a week or so ago. And I just tend to look around and say, like, if you're a Democrat, you must be in full panic mode because there is nothing that they can run on that they have done positively for the people of this country. Generally speaking, if you are an incumbent and you have the opportunity to do a State of the Union address in an election year, you would tout all of your big positive things that you did for America. We didn't get that from Joe Biden. He was like a cranky old man yelling at people. And here's what Joe Biden had to say about officially running against Donald Trump. He said, freedom and democracy are at risk here at home in a way they have not been since the Civil War. Donald Trump is running a campaign of resentment, revenge, and retribution that threatens the very idea of America. He is glorifying dictators, stay with me, and pledging to become one himself on day one. What cut? It sounds like Joe Biden is actually talking about himself and the Democrats there to me, Brianna, if you want my opinion. <laughs> None of the problems that we face today are uh, a Fort Sumter, right? That's the reality of it. Yeah. <laughs> Democrats, have had, Democrats have had a very long history of smearing anybody, specifically Republicans, as either radicals, extremists, threats to democracy. I mean, you go back to the Reconstruction times and Republicans who wanted um, freed black Americans to have the same rights as us were smeared by Democrats as being too radical, right? They were extremists. That's what they were called, radical Republicans. And Democrats have continued that playbook up until now to try and cast a shadow of doubt on any concerns that Republicans may have. And Stephanie made a great point about the enthusiasm levels. When voters went out in 2020, they were voting against Donald Trump. They were excited to do so. And like you mentioned earlier, when you've had four years of of Trump versus four years of Biden, you don't have that same enthusiasm. And you mentioned Marianne Williamson, um, and I think there's a real concern here with her, with RFK Jr. Joe Biden lost or, or lost a lot of votes to uncommitted, right? And these are in key swing states like North Carolina and Michigan, where he is really losing support amongst his base because of his support. <clears throat> And we have seen the Biden administration recently. Chuck Schumer is saying that we need to, uh, Israel needs a new election, right? Get rid of Netanyahu. Uh, they have put pressure on Israel to stop their campaign to eradicate terrorists because the Biden administration is flailing. And so what they kind of hope here is that uh, they will be able to build that base back. But what people like RFK and Williamson hope is that perhaps they can take a really good chunk out of Biden come November 2020, because if you have people willing to vote uncommitted, they might be willing to vote for a third party candidate, an actual third party candidate who's not uncommitted. Yeah, it's they're really in the thick of it. And actually, Joe Biden in a lot of these states sort of ran uncontested. And he still lost as kind of as you're pointing out, Brianna, 20 percent, around 20 percent of the vote in most of the states around this country. So that means that there really are so many Democrats who are like, oh, my God, I definitely don't want to vote for Joe Biden again. This is embarrassing. This is a disaster. Where do we go? And they probably will go or look to a Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. Um, it's a wild time. I'm just I'm just telling everybody, wait until like September. You think it's crazy now? Wait until September. It's gonna it's gonna be really something. And we're we're all here for it because we have to win this election. There, there is no other option. Um, you know, there's a lot of just general nonsense out there and things that make no no sense to a lot of people. One of those things that I think people look at it and they say, how how does this work? Is, you know, you have a driver's license, you have an ID, and that ID is generally used by maybe police officers who need to identify you to, I don't know, ensure that you are indeed the person you say you are. 
a lot of these IDs, and actually 22 states around the country, Stephanie, this one shocked me, 22 states around the country allow you to put X on your ID as your gender. And this is in case you are transgender, non-binary, or intersex. I still don't know what the hell all those things mean, but okay. Sarah Sanders, governor of Arkansas, has gone ahead and said, we would like to get rid of X on our driver's licenses. It seems like this makes sense to me because, again, if you are, say you pull somebody over and they hand you an ID, wouldn't you like to know really what gender that person is? Wouldn't you like to know the person indeed in that photo on the ID is a person you're talking to? How it makes sense that we use X for any of this is beyond me. But I'm going to say kudos to Governor Sarah Sanders for doing something that just seems generally like it makes a lot of sense. What did you think of that? Uh, my first thought is what a boss. <laughs> um, Sarah Huckabee <laughs> Sanders is just amazing. And I like that she's no nonsense and she's putting her foot down on this and she doesn't care how the media depict her, uh, what she know they're going to call her a transphobe and all of these phobes because she doesn't want X on driver's licenses. You know, she's not going to participate in the charade of making people feel good and feel special. Look, we're, you're either male or female. That's how you're born. That's how, that's how God created you, whether you like it or not. Uh, and, and a lot of people, for some reason, they want to be special. So they they want to have these different pronouns or go by X or whatever. And the fact is you're either male or female and you got to just be like everyone else. You're not special. And as you pointed out, there there is a, a security concern here, which is law enforcement could potentially have a hard time yeah. identifying somebody if they're going by X. Like if you're looking for somebody, where do you even start if you don't know if you're looking for a male or female? And, uh, you know, they say that Originally, the 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 line and the narrative here was, well, why does it matter if I want to be a woman or a man? How does that affect your life? Well, it does affect the lives of women because we have people, for the most part, infringing on women's rights, especially when it comes to the transgender stuff. Uh, and, and across the board, if you will, whether it be sports or jobs or just work opportunities in general, you keep seeing Dylan Mulvaney's face popping up, taking away opportunities from women, uh, you know, things that could go to women, for example. Yeah, you actually have uh, right now Riley Gaines and I, I think it's like 15 other athletes suing the NCAA, uh, Brianna, for, for women because they're saying you guys are not taking measure and putting in place measures that would make it fair and safe for women to play sports if you're allowing biological men to compete against women. So they have this lawsuit out right now. But it really does beg the question whenever you look at things like this, where do you draw a line for these sorts of things? Because if you're going to allow on a government issued ID, somebody to just decide that they they want to have a different gender than they truly are born, um, where, you know, it's a slippery slope. It is a security issue. issue. I know that, you know, you can't just go fill out random stuff on like a, a United States passport. Um, but we could see a place where if people don't stand up and say, this is a little bit much like we're not just going to allow you to to choose whatever it is you decide there has to be some rationale for it i mean next thing you know people are going to be you know uh, we know people identify as animals all the time they, <laughs> these people are out there i don't know where the line is though like what what do you think brianna well, I think anytime somebody puts X on their license, you know that they are mentally ill. And I'm not saying that as a slight, I'm saying that as a matter of fact. You know, you go back 40 years ago um, and not being a cross-dresser, I'm not talking about people who cross-dress, but people who truly believe that they were a man when they're a woman, they were defined by the Psychiatric Association as having a mental illness. And that's an accurate description of what they're going through. And the last thing they need is to have their you know, healthy breast tissue cleaved off. They need a mental help, whether that's being put in a facility until someone can help them, that's the case. And you know, one of the issues with putting your license and putting X down is, let's say you're not pulled over. Let's say you get into a car accident, God forbid. Men and right. women have different bodies. First of all, women bruise more easily. Women have more mass above their torso while men have more uh, in their legs, right? There are different treatment procedures. And when you have a split second decision to save someone's life, knowing their sex could be quite literally a life-saving moment for them. And, you know, I was just reading a tweet the other day from an ABC's White House correspondent. She was responding to a Republican governor and she said that it was his opinion that there are two genders. So not only do you have the mental illness kind of permeating society, but then you have our media who unfortunately so many people still trust 
saying that it's an opinion to believe that there are two genders. And we wonder why society is changing to kind of acquiesce to this mental illness because the media is pushing it down our throats and people read it and they start to believe, well, maybe it is just an opinion when the fact remains it's not, it will never be, it's science. Yeah, speaking of the the media, I mean these these folks do just such a disservice at this point. I feel to the the average citizen of this country, and it's so sad because there is such a great opportunity for them to just report the facts and and tell us the truth about things. We know they'll never do that. New York Magazine has a a writer. Uh, this is a transgender. Uh, let me see. This her, his name is Andrea Long Chu. He is a man who identifies as a woman, and he wrote this whole article promoting sex changes for children as quote biological justice. Listen to this one, Stephanie. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning cultural critic, again Andrea Long Chu, who argues that allowing children to undergo sex change procedures is a right that comes from something called biological justice, which he writes also includes the right to abortion, the right to nutritious food and clean water, and crucially, the right to health care. So this guy wants us to believe that children should be able to change their sex and have sex change procedures, just like they should have the opportunity to drink water and eat food. This is a this is a little much because uh, I think a lot of people look at this and they say that sounds totally insane, Stephanie. Uh, it is insane. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. The fact that we even have to have this conversation is crazy uh, that people are promoting this so aggressively. And think about this. This article that uh, this person wrote went through editors and went through probably right. several sets of eyeballs and it still it's made New it York magazine. This is not some random yeah. it's New York magazine and still wow. made it onto the site. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So in a sense, they're all supportive of this, right? Like you can't have in a newsroom really stupid, wild opinions and, and conspiracy theories and have it published like in a normal newsroom yet they have no problem putting this propaganda out there. And unfortunately, even though this person feels this way, uh, sadly, this um, this type of content out there is going to be confusing for maybe some parents who aren't super <clears throat> informed on the issue who think maybe it's the right thing to do. And as you know, the healthcare industry, there are doctors out there who are making a lot of money off of this. Uh, you got to follow the money trail. And unfortunately, children are going to be the victims of this. I mean, you need to be 18 or older if you want to make these life altering body changes. Uh, you need to really think this through because if you think back when you were a kid, there was a lot of things you maybe wanted to do that you would regret. Think about, uh, you know, a lot of your friends who are getting tattoos and piercings and all these things. And, you know, fast forward 10, 15 years most of them regret all the things that they did to their body. So, uh, but they weren't having these, you know, serious sex changes, if you will. So yeah, I mean, it's just really a travesty uh, that they continue to push this. One of my biggest regrets, honestly, if I could go back in time, and my mom told me not to do this. I used to use tanning beds. Is that horrific? <laughs> oh my gosh. And I remember my mom telling me, she was like, that is going to ruin your skin. Here I am. Here well, I am, 41 years you old. I, well, let me tell you something. I've done a I've done a lot of lasers and stuff, whatever the it's chemical peels. Cause honestly, it's amazing whenever you're you're in the moment. You're right, Stephanie. I, I in addition, I can see that there was a time in my life where I was a tomboy. I was the only girl in my neighborhood. I played a lot of sports. I really loved doing that. I I hung out with all the guys and my brother in the neighborhood. And all I wanted to do was play football. I, my dad was a big football player. I love college football, especially. So I'm always watching football or like playing football. And I really was like, gosh, I wish I could play football. I wish I was a guy so I could play football. Had I been born like 25 years later and I had per potentially the wrong teacher get a hold of me, because we know how this all starts in the schools. They're not allowed to tell the parents in some cases. They can call you a different name at school than you know what your given name is. They can refer to you as a different gender, pronouns, all that stuff at school. They don't tell the parents. I can see how easily I could have been convinced when I was, say, like, 14 years old that like, hey, if you feel like you want to be a guy and you want to play football, let's get that path opened up for you. Let's start the, the process of that. It is actually terrifying, Brianna, to it think really 
what could happen where, where I could be right now. I wouldn't have two kids if I had gone through all the, the crazy stuff that they, you know, the hormone therapies and all that. It is, it's really serious stuff if you really think about it. Here are two things that you probably didn't know that I learned after reading, unfortunately, this article by this individual promoting uh, sex changes for kids. There's something called a TERF and a TARL, T-E-R-F and T-A-R-L. I didn't know anything about this. I'm always learning the new lingo and the new information. For anyone paying attention, a TARL is a transagnostic reactionary liberal. They're anti-woke leftists who generally oppose sex change procedures for minors. Okay, well, there you go. Then there's a TERF. These are trans-exclusionary radical feminists as embodied by Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling and second wave feminists. So basically, these are bad things to be if you are on the side of sex changes for kids. These apparently are are liberals or feminists who are against this sort of thing as well, Um, and rightly so. I'm always learning new terms, uh, Brianna, and this is a new one for me. The intersex, the uh, all of it. There's a lot of stuff you got to keep up on. Are you up on all of it? No, I'm, I, I'm literally trying to wrap my head around what you just explained. You know, it's yeah. women have always, and I'm not a rah-rah feminist, but you go back to the early 1900s, especially the 1800s, women were told to acquiesce to whatever the men wanted, right? Uh, homekeeper, whether they wanted to have a, a career that wasn't necessarily supported in the early 1920s, 1930s, right? But it was always about acquiescing to what men said women should be in society. And here we are after fighting an entire an entire movement to get the right to vote, to have your own credit card, to get credit, to be able to go into the workforce and not have people look down to you. And now we're being told that we need to acquiesce to mentally ill men who say, well, we're actually going to teach you how to be a woman, right? Where Where is the line for feminists to step in and say, this being a feminist is about supporting real women who are not told to bow down to what men say, men being these transgender individuals. And, you know, this is a game of semantics. This writer mentions healthcare. It's not about healthcare, right? Healthcare is treating in the underlying illness. The underlying illness here is a mental illness. It's not being treated, right? They're actually promoting it and helping them. They're helping foster that mental illness by these, uh, procedures. And, you know, you go back to the 1950s. They said lobotomies were good for you, right? They said smoking wasn't good for you. They told you drinking milk was going to hurt you, right? Modern medical science has always gotten it wrong in some capacity. But now they're telling us that right now in this time, modern medical science isn't getting it wrong and that you can cleave healthy breast tissue off children and it's going to be fine. And luckily there are people like Mary Margaret Olihan at the Daily Signal. She's writing an entire book on detransitioners, right? Covering these poor children who were kind of co-opted by uh, outside influences to change their bodies inherently, probably permanently, and are now regretting it and saying, how did the system fail me? And until we kind of shine a spotlight on those individuals who are coming out and saying, I was duped, you're going to see this uh, uh, persist, and it's going to really screw up future generations who are going to blur the lines between science, reality, and and honestly, people who just need mental help. Yeah, they're, and they're here. You know what? You're so right to point out all the things that the the medical community said was good for us. Didn't they? Didn't Coca Cola start with like actually cocaine <laughs> or something? You know, you think back there, and yeah, we've we've come leaps and bounds from there. But the idea that now everything, you can just fix it, everything with a pill or, you know, you know, if you feel like you're a different gender, just cut parts of your body off or here, take this. It'll change you. It's really, it's terrifying. You're right. At the very least, we're going to have an entire generation of very confused, very screwed up people. I mean, you look at the rates of transgenderism within like the Gen Z and, and you know, it's it none of it makes sense and none of it has any sort of um bell curve that that would actually be r- rational it just doesn't make sense scientifically these things don't work out um all right we're going to talk about west point don't go anywhere we're going to take a quick commercial break all right hate to interrupt the show but if you know anything about me you know how seriously i take my health one of the ways i stay healthy is taking balance of nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule You can read about how it was developed by Dr. Douglas Howard on their website yourself. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who have purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies 
over the past 20 years. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. If you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. In fact, you can order today. And whether you order online or call them direct, you can use the promo code LARA to get this special offer of 35% off, plus $10 off any additional sets, plus free shipping and their money-back guarantee. Call them at 800 800- 246-8751 and use discount code Lara or order online at balanceofnature.com and use discount code L-A-R-A to get 35% off. Mike Lindell has a passion to help you get the best sleep of your life. After he invented the world's best pillow, he created the famous Giza Dream Sheets. They're the best sheets you will ever sleep on. For a limited time, you can get a queen size set for $59.98, a king size set just $69.98. These are the lowest prices in history. Mike and MyPillow continue to be canceled by big box stores and attacked by the media. They appreciate all of your great support during these times and want to say thank you by giving you free shipping on your entire order today. To get these specials, go to MyPillow.com or call 800 800- 624-3945 and use promo code TRUMP. You get the famous Giza Dream Sheets, queen size for $59.98 and king size just $69.98. You will also get 60% off the original My Slippers. So call 800-624-3945 or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TRUMP for free shipping today. All right, so West Point Military Academy is probably one of the the most well-known military academies in the country. Very prestigious place to go. They just decided, Stephanie, that out of nowhere, uh, they've done it nine times, they say, they, they've they decided to drop duty, honor, country from their motto, as their motto from their mission statement. And instead, they in, inserted army values. Um, it's kind of like they went from specific duty on our country. You know what that is. You know what you're fighting for. You know why you're there to something kind of vague army values. I'm not sure how those square up, Um, but it kind of seems like this is a symptom of exactly what we see overall in our military. Everything is kind of watered down. There, There really is less focus on pride and on the mission at hand, which is military readiness. And we see all of these sort of woke things that are going on and they're focused on the pronouns and meeting quotas of certain, you know, groups of people to be in the military. Meanwhile, we are not meeting like the basic, um, you know, we're having issues recruiting people. The last year, the army um, recruitment f- was short, like 15,000 soldiers. They u- usually like to enlist like 60,000 a year, 15,000 soldiers short. It's it's very problematic. And I think doing things like this just further take us down a path that I don't think is positive for our military. And you think of the implications of that long-term or God forbid, short-term, if we have an unprepared, understaffed military, that's kind of scary. Exactly. Uh, So Army Values, as you pointed out, was originally like in their title, right? But now that it's just Army Values, it is vague and it, it is open to whatever anyone wants to make it. And the problem here is that you're right, they continue to um, trash patriotism, uh, trash the military. This has been going on for for a long time. And it's an effort from the left. uh, And we've seen the left come in and try to wokeify the military. We saw their recruitment ads that were like promoting LGBTQ stuff and all of these random things that had nothing to do with military preparedness uh, and readiness, as you pointed out. Uh, And so, you know, this is probably why they're having such a hard time recruiting. Recruiting, uh, I mean, has hit like some serious lows to the fact that people are talking about how we might need a draft in the future if if we continue at this rate. And uh, I read a little bit further into this and apparently they have changed their name nine times over the years. And I think they had settled on that name uh, in 1998. So it's not totally unusual. But when you look at the full picture here, you can kind of see what's going on. 
Yeah, it's just like it's like watering things down, Brianna. And I think that's that's unfortunate and it's problematic. As I was looking a little further in terms of, you know, the recruitment enlistment situation, only 9% of young Americans who qualify for the United States military have any inclination to actually apply and be part of our military. By the way, this is a path that I thought about going down at one time in my life. I thought nothing could be cooler than being part of the United States military. Like what, what a proud thing to do. What obviously a patriotic thing to do, but just kind of like badass, like to be in whatever branch of the military it is. I, I thought seriously about doing that at one time in my life. And the, the problem is, the fact that only 9% of young Americans qualify is also kind of scary. And the reason they say it's only 9% is because some of these people are, quote, too fat or too criminal to defend our country. So I live near West Point, and I pass West Point quite a few times every week, uh, just going to and from as I uh, do my daily life. And I, I look at it, and I, I think to myself that there are people in there who are willing to put their lives on the line for this country, and I'm so thankful for them, because I'll be honest, I would be petrified to do that, right? I, it's such a noble thing to undertake. But the reason that so many young people are not either eligible or don't want to become involved in the military is why would they? Because all they do, all the yeah does now is smear our military members, right? They're looked at as people who uphold systems of racism, right? They're not looked at as these revered heroes like they should be, but rather people who are upholding systemic racism and other issues, okay? And then here you have these people, again, they are risking their lives. We lose 13 service members in Afghanistan, and what is the response in the United States? Oh, well, President Biden could have done better, but he didn't have it. Then they arrest a father of one of the Marines that was murdered because of the Biden administration's actions. And that's the reward that our service members' families receive in America, right? So, so you know, you go back 100 years ago, our service members, they were they were celebrated, right, when they came back from war. They were celebrated if they just walked in in a uniform, right? People respected them as they should. And nowadays, people won't even look at someone and say, thank you for your service, right? It's just like, oh someone's here in a uniform, what are they doing for me? People have lost their sense of patriotism because our education system, which is I think where it starts the most, doesn't highlight the great accomplishments of the United States and make clear that they're only accomplishments because we have a military either helping us achieve those goals or making sure we're safe enough to do those things domestically. Yeah, and you know what, I'm glad you brought up the education system. It feels like there there are attacks on the country from all sides. And one of the ways, if you really want to change an entire generation and the way they think, you go after the kids, right? And whether that's through the education, whether it's through things like TikTok, which obviously there are a lot of questions around right now, a lot of this stuff stems from China. Think about the money that China is investing in uh, different places all across the country. There's a lot of money, sadly, in our current educational system that comes from China. Thank goodness we have some people who are actually paying attention to it. I talk about China all the time because it is, as far as I'm concerned, it is our the biggest threat to the future of the United States. And the Chinese don't do things right out in front of your face. They kind of go a, a, in a backwards way. They go through back doors and they you, you don't really know what they're working on because that's on purpose. They don't want you to see it until it's too late. So how House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer fortunately has launched a government-wide probe into the Chinese Communist Party's ongoing attempt to target influence and infiltrate every sector and community in the United States. And again, I feel like I talk about this a lot. Guess who else talks about it a lot? Donald Trump. He's talked about it since the day he came down in 2015 and said he was running for president of the United States. It is a huge thing. We have to keep our eye on China. The probe will demand federal agencies provide information on how the United States is combating the CCP's warfare that influences several sectors, education, agriculture, critical infrastructure, research, energy, business, space, technology sectors. Without firing a single bullet, the Chinese Communist Party is waging war against the U.S. by targeting, influencing, and infiltrating every economic sector and community in America. That's via James Comer. Um, Stephanie, I am always terrified of China, and the scariest part of all of it is 
We have a president in office right now who has just completely written China off as a problem. You got spy balloons flying across the country, nothing done about it. Still never asked Xi Jinping about the origins of COVID-19. We have to watch China. Thank goodness someone at least is looking into this. What do you think, Stephanie? China is a great threat, and uh, it's a good thing that we have some members of Congress and those who are concerned about it and bringing attention to it. And you're so right. I mean, I mean, it's not unknown that there are countries who want to influence Americans in the way that they think and the way that they run their daily lives. I mean, for China and for Russia and for other countries uh, that are our enemies, uh, if you will, to sit and see us fight amongst each other, I mean, they're sitting back and laughing. Yep. Because uh, if you look at the propaganda, especially on social media, for example, China with TikTok, the algorithms seem to be anti-American propaganda, things that are hurting the mental health of young kids. For example, the, the, the LGBTQ transgenderism stuff is really heavily pushed on TikTok, uh, which in a sense, China, the Chinese government has, um, you know, they have influence on that, uh, even though they say that they don't, but they do because you can't operate uh, out of China or run a business without having the government influence that. And so that's why there's this whole TikTok debate. And there's a reason why the Chinese government doesn't want American social media companies to influence uh, their people. They don't allow Facebook or Google or any of the other ones, uh, Instagram in China. I, I wonder why, because they don't want Americans influencing the way Chinese people think. So uh, yeah, it's a huge concern. And I'm wondering how deep and um, how big this operation is. I mean, we are just scratching at the surface of it and I'm sure it runs really deep and I'm sure it's very scary. Yeah, if you wanted to take over as the leader of the free world, Brianna, what would you do? You would probably ensure that the current leader of the free world was no longer in that spot. And how do you do that? You cause, as sort of as Stephanie just pointed out, you cause chaos and issues between people within that country. You allow people to come to what they think is their own decision about things, but you have actually heavily influenced it, hating their own country, not being willing to fight for their country, recruitment for the military being down. You would put these people in such a precarious spot, you know, encourage things coming over the southern border because you know it's wide open that are going to be detrimental to Americans. I mean, think about fentanyl. I think, I think it's the number one killer of our youth in this country right now. Where does it originate? It originates in China, fentanyl coming up through the southern border. China is playing uh, the craziest game of chess and no one has paid any attention to it. This sort of thing is, is really, really serious. And if we are not careful and if we do not elect the right person who could stand up against China come this November, I, I really don't know. I really am very concerned about these things. TikTok is also the number one um, way that people ages 18 to 34 gather their news and information. And I and that is not a joke. When I say that to some people, they're like, no way. That's where they get their info is off of TikTok. And they have an entire layer on top of TikTok that is supposed to encourage people in the direction that the Chinese Communist Party wants. Scary stuff. It is. I mean, you know, you, uh, you both mentioned this, actually, but, you know, you look at the algorithms, right? China promotes education, math, science videos on their social media platforms. And we put yes. oh, young girls who think they're conservative influencers shaking their behinds. Right. And it really does a disservice not only to the conservative movement, but to Americans in general who think that their po their political knowledge should come from young kids on both sides of the spectrum who do a cool dance and put up a few captions. Right. But there's so much more. It's called cherry picking information, right? You have 60 seconds. You're going to cherry pick the stuff that supports your side. And when we talk about China as a whole, you know, something a lot of people don't know. There are seven service centers in the United States that are tied to the communist, communist Chinese party, and they operate with Beijing. It's a police state. And they like yep. to target their Chinese dissidents in the United States and also operate by spying on other Americans. And that is allowed in the United States. There are seven of them, right? That should be one of our top con con uh, security concerns. Imagine trying to tell Xi Jinping, we're going to put seven American centers over in China just to monitor American citizens who are over there and maybe what else is going on in the country. 
they would laugh in our faces and say, good luck trying to even get in. And here we have the United States open arms, right? And that is a huge concern. And then, Laura, you know, you mentioned the fact that we won't question uh, where the origin of COVID came from. If you remember when Gavin Newsom met with Xi Jinping, Biden's Department of State actually told Gavin Newsom, don't bring up the origins of COVID. That's how scared we are. And I'm not going to use the word, but it starts with a P and ends with footing around China for a virus that killed thousands of Americans. And we're just gonna pretend that either it didn't happen or the American families who lost a loved one don't deserve to have at least some semblance of an answer. And you know, former President Donald Trump, he was great on this, right? From the moment he took office, he targeted China. And I really do believe wholeheartedly that should he win in November, we will see China cowering down or at least on bended knee because they're gonna realize that Donald Trump isn't gonna take the same amount of curse word that Joe Biden has for years. <laughs> well, and don't kid yourself. China is invested in keeping Joe Biden as the president of the United States of America. So think about the fact that you have an app like TikTok where all of the, the young people in this country, I mean, the majority of them are getting their news and information. What would you do if you were China? Would you not try to influence an election by sending certain messaging out on TikTok by, you know, using the algorithms to get people to see the things you wanted. Absolutely you would. And then, Rihanna, you kind of brought this up. You look at China and what they are doing and what they're teaching to their kids. You've got these like nine-year-old kids who are literally assembling guns. Who These kids are super smart over there. They're keeping them in school all the time. They are, they're ready to go, they're ready to fight, and they're ready to take over the world. That is not a joke. Look up what is going on over there in the Chinese schools. Man, we are so far apart from where they are, and we are not paying attention. Before we go, this is, I, I didn't even say we're gonna talk about this, but it's been driving me crazy, and I, I just feel like I need to get it off my chest. This Kate Middleton photo, can I get, can I get a read on everybody <laughs> from this? First of all, what is it that she edited that anybody was upset about? I don't know what is going on. I, I swear I was zooming in on these photos and I was like, what's the big deal here? Stephanie, can you tell me why people are so obsessed and crazed over the Kate Middleton photo and then why she like apologized about it? What? Yeah, so I don't have palace intrigue ever. Like I'm just not interested, <laughs> but this did catch my attention and I did a little further reading and examining of the photo. And so what people are up in arms about is they're suggesting that, I believe they uh, think that she used a picture from a Vogue cover and then Photoshopped that into the family photo. So there, it wasn't just like a quick little like bump and tick and smooth out type of photo editing deal they're suggesting. And they oh. were showing the Vogue cover photo and how it was like manipulated like right into that family photo. So that would be kind of weird. It's not the, just the average Photoshop. And it did kind of look like it. I, I'm not gonna lie, it really looks like that's what happened here. And then there were a couple other photos where they believe she was Photoshopped into with old pictures. So um, I don't know what's going on with her. There's a lot of rumbling that she has some health issues and that they're trying to give the appearance that everything's fine by using these old pictures. Um, so I'll leave it there. Yeah, the, the funny thing I saw, I think it was like Babylon B. Brianna posted something and they were like, they finally have put minds to rest by posting a picture from today of Kate Middleton with William. And then there's, she's standing there with Queen Elizabeth, who obviously has passed away. Oh, no. I'm like, that's kind of funny that they, I, I like where they were with that. I don't know. I, I, I didn't know all that. Stephanie, you really came with the heat. You didn't even know I was going to ask you about this. Brianna, what do you think? Honestly, I have been very deep into this because the memes oh. have been incredible. I, uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is headed over to the UK and someone retweeted his statement and goes, he's going to find Kate Middleton. And I thought that was <laughs> just the funniest thing. But look, look, the real concern is this. The palace, and I believe her lawyer might have come out, maybe this was just hearsay, but come out and said, like, if we don't hear from Kate herself, we're going to have to actually, like, inquire about where Kate is. Because, like Stephanie mentioned, oh the most recent picture that they released of her apparently being in a car, her head is completely turned. You just see the back of her head. And people are saying that if you fluctuate the lighting settings, it's actually the same picture of her and another instance outside. And they just took her her head and her hat. And it's like, if they have nothing to hide, even if Kate Middleton wants to be out of the spotlight, 
why doesn't she just do a quick video like hi today's march 15th i'm alive yeah I'm hold up like hot. a like a hostage video hold up like a newspaper or something so we know right yeah, right yeah just come out and just wow. let us know you're okay and then, crazy. then the articles and stuff will stop I and love then I don't that, have to worry I, about it anymore i love that 70 you're like i don't pay any attention to this but here's yeah. the deep dive that i did yeah i i'm like what every time i would go on and like i go on the daily mail all the time because i feel it's like it's a wealth of everything. It's all kinds of crazy people stuff. And it's sort of like events that matter to people. So I'm just scrolling. It's like every photo, every every story is a photo, this photo story. I'm like, what is this? Thank you for clearing it, uh, clarifying and clearing it up. Because um, we all use Photoshop. I'm like, are people really that outraged? I'm like, I'm, I'm getting old and haggard. Like I gotta do what I can to like make a photo look good because everyone else is using it. So I gotta compete. So I'm like, why are they hating so, on her so much? Some so of them go a little far. Some yeah, go a I'm little not, far. You gotta Photoshop be careful. When I was in like college to replace my face now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful with that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Stephanie and Brianna, thank you for joining us for this episode of The Right View. To everybody at home, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. We'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Lara Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.